uh, as Freeman Jack is appearing on Johnny Meath uh, tonight, uh, we'll be discussing adult topics with adult language. <laughs> if you're easily offended, best you go and, uh, I don't know, watch a box set of Dad's Army or something. Yeah, the, the well used to be no Jack, so... <laughs> 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 I don't even give that out anymore. <laughs> uh, no, I used to get into too much trouble with that in the early days. I mean, here's, here's an example of some of the things that have, I suppose, concerned me. Uh, one of the things that really did a lot to correcting my uh, attitudes towards my own anti-statism was experiencing something approaching a uh, true anarchic micro society in one of the traveller camps. Uh, basically, the police had corralled all of the hippie travellers and all of the gypsy travellers into this small area around um, uh, an old disused army barracks and as such created effectively a super site that none of us particularly wanted and certainly wouldn't have chosen to sort of cohabit as we generally didn't mix particularly. And as a result, this site literally became a law unto itself. The police could only come on in riot vans. It was uh, survival of the fittest of the very worst kind, you know what I mean? There was certainly not enough work for that larger community to find gainful employment. So many of the sort of uh, drink and drug addicted members of that community obviously had to resort to crime. Once they'd exhausted all of the local shops, by way of shoplifting and could no longer even get into the local shops within walking distance. They had no choice but to resort to starting to steal from members of their own. And so the, the site essentially became a survival of the fittest and keep, if you wanted to keep it, bolt it down or padlock it, which was completely the opposite of the culture that all of us had come from, uh, living as individual communities. But it was certainly an eye-opener that how quickly a civilised, uh, incredibly civilised. I mean, the New Age travellers, although we were perceived by the outside world as this riotous rabble, which to some degree we were, in our own dealings, in our interpersonal dealings amongst the, the society itself, it was unbelievably civilised. There wasn't... Uh, adultery was almost unheard of on the traveller scene. Right. Yeah? You, uh, monogamy was the default simply because we were such a tight community that such emotional miscreances that could go unnoticed in a broader society were all focused on. Yeah, they're all under the magnifying glass. If there's only six or 12 of you in any given group, then obviously a bit of bed hopping anywhere in that group is going to be very much more noticeable than it is in a town of 10,000 people. Yeah, sorry, I was just thinking what you said about the travellers and uh, how it kind of collapsed after time. Wasn't that... Didn't that primarily happen because of an outside influence? Like the point like you said, the police came in and they, what did you say they did? Well, certainly the police had corralled what was a number they created, of... They created a situation, right? Yes, yeah, it was an artificial situation. It wasn't a yeah. situation of any of our choosing. None of us would have necessarily have chosen to take a site with so little work prospects yeah. and a uh, few uh, material resources. There was no firewood, there was no nowhere to dig latrines. It was just a horrible, squalid place full of sickly dogs and even sicklier people. I also strongly believe that the travelling community was actually targeted with heroin as well. Yeah, um, so I, yeah. I've they been were, around. They, they, were, they, were, they were tried to destroy that community, didn't they? Cause yeah, no, absolutely. One. Yeah, from without and from within, I also think we were infiltrated by uh, yeah. the same sort of, um, you know, these police infiltrators that are infiltrating the activists now. Well, we were effectively part of the sort of Green and Common Women peace movement at the time that was seen as uh, so very threatening by the state. So we were certainly under surveillance. We were often being surveilled by helicopter, which we all thought was hysterical. But that's just it, isn't it? When you left your own devices, that you would get on fine and be and survive and just do as you need to do, as you've always done. You know, but the amazing thing about that is, is that in a, in a, like a modern day, modern day, on the, like, or even a legal system, as, or, as they would sort of call it, or legal modern day lawful system, they would just call that a witch hunt and persecution, wouldn't they? Well, they yeah, but it was okay because we were dirty hippies. Yeah, you know, but that's the, that's the amazing thing, though, isn't it? All they have to do is relabel you, and all of a sudden you don't come under any anything uh, that you consider to be uh, what they would be there to protect you as humanity. Yeah, relabel you, and it's like, oh, you don't, you no longer come under anything. Now we can do what the fuck we want. Yeah, well, that's the whole, 
that's the whole point of the enemy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just label you. That's you true. have to create an enemy in order to get decent men to kill people. Divide and conquer. conquer, yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, there, was still, there, was still, there were examples, I mean, they, they, called, they called them travellers or whatever, but they were, they, you know, the travellers were an example of what you could do outside the system and survive and live. They got to destroy that because it's like, you know, it, it's kind of like the remnant of uh, the past, right? Yeah. When you're Unbelievable. That's disgusting, like, and we're talking about kids, like... I mean, I mean this, is, this is another thing as well, is the, the propagandising that we have received about the Nazi Holocaust. And uh, I'm not a Holocaust denier. I absolute, can absolutely see <laughs> the reason for the alarm and the uh, perpetuation of the story. However... This has to be put into perspective of, as occupants of a country that invented the fucking term genocide. You know what I mean? We, we were the ones that invented the removal of a population from an area in order to repopulate it with our own lower orders of gentry and their servant class. And the only people that we would keep in an area that we had militaristically taken was the women and the children, and we would employ them as servants on slave wages. That's your glorious British Empire, folks. And I feel genuinely sorry for all of yeah, these, of all of these servicemen, because I genuinely believe that most of them have either bought into the lie, the propaganda lie of the British military being this fucking honourable, bloody, historical fucking establishment, Bollocks. It was the fucking armed militia for the East India Dock Company. Full stop. It was sent in all over the world to sort out the fucking civilian populations of, uh, of unlawfully, illegally occupied countries to subject them to the corporate fucking will of the East India Dock Company so that we can carry on consuming our fucking alcohol, our fucking tobacco, our opium, our cotton and silk none of which we were prepared to actually bend our back and make ourselves. Exactly. I'm disgusted at being an Englishman. I'm a Pict. I'm not an Englishman. With I have army, no part in their society. Even with the army thing, we can see it here in, uh, uh, you know, in Ireland. We can see people from the north and even... Oh, man, I've just, I just got to tell everybody in Ireland, man, I wept. I wept all the way through the Troubles. I would sit and watch the TV and I would weep. Uh, your communities at war with each other and the British army, the British army on the streets of Britain using live ammunition on a civilian population. What the fuck? Yeah. Even now, people are not incensed about this. What the hell? Yeah. We had, when the riots were going off over here, we had call for bloody water cannons and rubber bullets on the streets of London by the public in London. They have got them so wrapped around their finger. I mean, part of that, again, was a propaganda campaign, you know what I mean? We were listening to the various media feeds coming from sort of local London sources during the riots, and it was quite clear that every sort of third caller or so was quite obviously a shill plant caller, you know what I mean, calling for some extreme fucking behaviour or another. They certainly weren't members of the general public just calling in because they were so righteously indignant, indignant about what was going on in their communities. But we know that, but what brought me on was the consolidated funds. And to me, that was a huge thing that I found out for myself last week to make me realise how the power is kind of... Uh, controlling the money and how the we are is like as I was saying last week. If you be, if we all believe that uh, uh, or accept everyone's sovereignty, well, we gotta realize what we have paid in our taxes. That's the reason why these these wars are happening, and people gotta realize this. What what we're actually paid into, and it's like what you just says there. These courts they don't have to be uh, filled with people. You know what I mean? I would like to correct you slightly there. Right. That these wars aren't caused by our taxes. No, no, I'm not or, saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's absolutely clarify this because this is again a key issue of personal sovereignty. Wars are not caused by governments. They are not caused by secret societies. They are not caused by any of the multitude of things that we are told that they are caused by. They are caused by one thing and one thing alone. Man. Young men 
who are prepared to pull a trigger. If we can stop the young men from ever wanting to pull a fucking trigger and kill another man, then there will be no more war. That's it. That's the answer. There's, there's your answer to global peace. Stand at the fucking doors of the recruited agencies and say, young man, they are going to march you off the war. They are going to tell you to kill people. They will tell you that they are the enemy, but they will be your women and children. They will just be your women and children from the other side. And moreover, I would suggest that that was actually beginning to happen, that that awareness of war, of the nature of war, was beginning to happen. And all of the traditional homes of all of the traditional regiments who held some semblance of the honour that the English military used to stand in, all of those regiments have now been closed. And the regiments that we now see being sent off to war are all the ones from the old coal mining towns, from the steel towns, yeah. from all of the places where Maggie folded the bloody industry first. Yeah, so we have a, a raft of strong, stocky, good genetic material, Forward. unemployed, get your girlfriend up the duff, yeah. no prospects of a flat, no prospects of a job recruitment offices popping up on every bloody corner with the staff sergeant standing there looking well fed well sorted and you don't have a brain little boy and you don't have a brain you don't well, think for yourself no That's, they do yeah but no no what what the options yeah but no no if you no, if your girlfriend's here, here. up the duff and you don't know any better if you don't if nobody comes and offers you the hand of guidance as a 19 year old or an 18 year old you are going to see that career in the army as possibly your only fucking step out of Babylon. That's your, you know, and okay, you might be getting your face out of the ship by standing on the head and, head and shoulders of somebody below you, but at least you get to breathe fresh air for a while. Until they pack you off home with chronic post-traumatic stress disorder and then wonder why three months later you're in fucking Nick. Or even come home with no legs. Well, you know, or yeah. broken at the back. Yeah, syndrome in a box. You know, and that's the problem. You know, some of these young people, they haven't got a chance when they grow up in these places. That's how we look at it. It's entirely on our shoulders to allow a platform for those cultural expressions to springboard from. Because if we leave them the mess that we've grown up with, unaltered then their lives will be impoverished due to it and possibly even you know what i mean the the fate of the human very human race itself being put into a very least catastrophic change a bloodbath in other words and i for one am not prepared to sit back and and wait for a bloodbath no. the whole careering towards an imminent collision with your eyes closed and your fingers crossed is Something best done on the pillion of a motorcycle that somebody else is riding, not on a life that you happen to be living of and you know, by your own fruition.